Is it okay if I come in? Hi, my name is uh, Anna. I'm going to be your student nurse today. I'm just going to put these down on a clean surface. Give us some privacy. Thank you. Hi, as I said, so my name is Anna. I'm going to be with you today. Before I get started, would it be all right if I checked your name and your date of birth? Thank you so much for that. Um, so I'm here today because your physician has placed an order for me to insert an indwelling catheter for you. Um, it appears that you have some urinary retention, and so they have ordered that urinary catheter to help with that. Doing this procedure will involve uh, cleansing your perineal area. Uh, do you have any questions for me that I can answer? And then I do need to have your verbal consent before I proceed with this uh, insertion of your indwelling catheter. Thank you for that verbal consent. And then for the purpose of this return demonstration, as soon as I am done inserting the catheter, I will be removing your urinary catheter. And then I do have a few questions in regards to allergies. Do you have any allergies whatsoever? No. And then specific to um, putting in the full, I just want to verify, do you have any allergies to latex, shellfish, chlorhexidine, or iodine? My patient has said no. So at this time, I'd like to do, again, a quick assessment um, of your uh, for any bladder distension in your abdomen. I would also check your perineal area for any signs of redness, skin breakdown, rashes, or open sores. Right, and I don't see any at this time. So I am going to bring some of my items over, placing again on a clean work surface. I'm gonna scoop this out of the way. Oopsies. And I'm just gonna raise your bed up a working height for me to my hips. And if you have any questions again throughout this procedure, just let me know. So I'm looking again for it to come to my hip level. That should be pretty good. I'm going to raise this up too because when I'm going to be working with my sterile area. So I'm going to be placing this back blanket on top of you. Unfold it. Sometimes these aren't folded easily. All right, so I'm going to raise this up over you, bring this down to cover your feet. Then I'm going to ask you to just hang on to this blanket while I just lower your top linens really quick. the bed. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to be, I want you to know that I'm going to be exposing your perineal area. So I'm going to be raising the back blanket up. Okay. And at this time, I'm going to ask if you can bring your knees up. I'm going to assist you with this. Knees are up, and then you're going to bring your ankles up towards, so bend your knees, your ankles are going to come up towards your knees, and I'm going to ask you as best as you can, if you can please uh, bring your knees outward. And this is about as far as I'm going to be able to get. Thank you so much for that. So at this time, I am going to lower my trail on this side. I'm going to do hand hygiene. And I'm going to be opening up my sterile package of your urinary catheter, working with the 14 French. And are you doing okay? So I'm opening up my sterile kit. I'm going to bring out my What I'm going to do is just fold over the edges of my bag, and I'm going to be placing this at the foot of the bed. I'm going to ask again, try not to um, kick your feet around too much, so just that bag can stay in place, and I'm going to ask you to kind of lay in this position throughout the procedure. I'm going to move this to my garbage, and just because I was touching on a little bit, I'm going to do a little extra hand hygiene before I'm opening up my kit. So now to open my sterile kit, I'm gonna make sure that I'm going to open the flap away first. And then I'm going to take the side 
gonna pinch the other side and I might want to grab this because of the way that was folded, making sure I'm only touching that outer inch. Pinch over here. And again, I'm making sure I'm not coming over my sterile heel or crossing over it. I'm gonna arrange that this way. Now I'm gonna have to grab my sterile drape from my kit without touching anything else. Only touching the edges. Then I want to make sure that sign, shiny side goes down. And I have poor lighting to show what I think that's my shiny side. Only touching my one inch. I don't want to cross over. So again, I can fix this, making sure I don't reach over it though. I can only touch my edges, so I'm going to leave that in place. I'm going to grab my sterile gloves without touching anything else in my kit. I'm going to come over here to the side so that way I can maintain sterility. Open my kit. And then the way these flaps are, again, we're going to do top flap. My bottom flap. So make sure that they can stay open for me. And then I'm going to grab my sides. Again, only touching, but no more than that one inch. Okay. And so I'm going to don my dominant hand first. I have a lot of hand hygiene at this point. So I'm going to then grab my dominant hand. I'm going to grab my non-dominant glove. I'm going to scoop it up. Put on my dominant glove. And then now I can fix my outside though if I needed to. So now at this point, I am going to not be using my fenestrated drape. However, if your institution requires that, please do, but I can leave that there for the moment. I'm going to be setting up my field over here first, which is going to be include, and before I do that, actually let me establish my, again, right hand is my dominant hand and my left hand is my non-dominant hand. However, right now I can still touch on here if wherever I need, uh, but I will be losing a hand when I move over to my client. If I ever break sterility at any point for this return demonstration, I need to identify it. So I'm going to open up my iodine solution. I'm gonna pour it and not actually open it, but pour it all over my cotton balls. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna come around. You have to main maintain sterility. I'm going to now that I have the iodine on top of that, I can move my kit over. Again, making sure that it stays within. And again, if you ever feel like something is about to cross, just scoot it over, but don't touch it. Okay, so now this is still within my sterile area because it's not within that one inch border. So I'm going to be applying the lubricant into the inner package part over here. So that way I can use it later. So lube, 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 lube. And actually for my purposes, because my camera woman <laughs> cannot assist with this, I will be putting the lubricant. You guys will use laundry detergent that will be provided to you when you are doing your return demo. So again, come around. And then I am going to take my, and this is not sterile, so I can come over that. I'm gonna take my syringe with the water, sterile water. And I'm going to be applying it and attaching it to the little balloon catheter right here, the one with the little green. And I'm not going to inflate anything, I'm just going to leave it attached. And so then now I'm going to be grabbing my catheter itself. I'm going to stick that into the box. And I will be removing this blue sheath. And as I do that, I want to make sure that I maintain the sterility of this tip of the catheter. So as I remove this, Hopefully you can all see this clearly. I'm going to be coiling it around my finger so that way this does not flop anywhere. And then I can unroll that. And then make sure again it stays within your box and doesn't come outside of the box. So it's nice in there. And so I have my lubricant, I have my catheter ready, I have my iodine on here, so I'm all ready to move over to my patient bedside. So again, I can touch anywhere on this box because my hands are both still sterile. I'm gonna come over here and place this within the sterile area. And so now what I'm gonna be doing is 
My right hand again was sterile. My left hand is my non-dominant, so that's gonna be touching the client. And so I will be able to feel my hand touch your perineal area while I do some cleansing. So again, my hand is gonna be on your perineal. So I am going to be um, spreading the labial folds. I'm going to grab my forceps and I'm gonna grab, for it's with each wipe, I'm going to make sure to use one new cotton ball on each wipe, and I'm gonna move from the direct downward direction from clitoris to anus with each wipe, and then discard said cotton ball. So, and this doesn't spread as easily, so bear with me. I am going to take my cotton ball, again, soaked with the iodine, and I'm gonna go from the labia that is further away from me, the labial fold that's further away from me, from clitoris to anus, and then come around, discard my cotton ball. Grab a new cotton ball, and I'm gonna go again on the labia closest to me from clitoris to anus, come around, and then one last cotton ball, and I'm gonna go right down the middle from clitoris to anus, and then come around and toss. And this whole time, my hand cannot leave the, the labial folds that I have spread, otherwise I've broken sterility. I no longer need this top part over here, so I can discard, and then I can take my catheter, I'm gonna hold it one to two inches from the distal end. I am going to apply my lubricant that is inside my box still. Again, you will have laundry detergent that someone will hand you so you can keep your kits nice and intact. And I'm gonna let my patient know that you will feel some pressure and I'm gonna ask you to bear down, please. So, I'm going to insert that catheter again, you're bearing down, inserting, and I'm going to insert with my dominant hand until I see a flash of urine. At that flash of urine, I am gonna insert another one to two inches. Okay, at that time, I can remove my non-dominant hand from the labia and secure my catheter while I take my dominant hand and inflate my balloon. And I will, and you are using sterile water. Let's make sure I'm not twisting. You will be using sterile water. Depending on your package you're using, your facility, you might use air. This one is sterile water. And I'm just gonna slowly inflate the balloon. Again, holding with my non-dominant hand, the catheter so it's secure. And then now I'm going to remove the uh, syringe, but I'm going to keep my thumb on the plunger as I do that. And then I do toss, and I'm going to do a gentle tug to make sure that the catheter is still in place. And then at this time, I am going to be removing this package from under you. Because I'm going to be removing the catheter immediately after, I will leave the scrape in place. Otherwise, I would remove it, so that way I can ensure my patient is comfortable. Um, and at this time, so that is secure. I'm gonna make sure to take off my sterile gloves. I'm gonna do some hand hygiene. Just gonna rub it all in. I'm still at my client's bedside. Put on my new gloves. And then I do have you have two straps that are available. If you have this patient in the room, already has a strap readily available, so I'll show you that really quick. You would just put this into the little bifurcation and clip it, but otherwise most of you, just like in the ATI video, are gonna have this strap right here that I can place around my patient's thigh so they wouldn't have two of these, just one. Their legs are a little slippery. Any time. There we go. Perfect. Make sure it's not too tight. Just my two fingers. And then I can take this. And I'm just going to secure that in place. Right. And then I am going to again position my patient into a comfortable position. And I would be lower, taking away the bath blanket as well as providing them back their um, blanket, but I'm gonna make sure that this Foley bag is secured below their bladder in a non-movable part of the bed. So sometimes you have hooks 
This bed unfortunately doesn't have a beautiful hook dust design for it, so I'm gonna do again put it on a non-movable part. Again, allowing for that urine flow to go away from the bladder. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna make sure I discard my garbage again. I would offer again to provide some perineal cleansing uh, to the client again so that they can maintain their comfort and cleanliness. Um, let's see. So I think that's it for that. So I'm gonna remove my gloves. Do my hand hygiene again. I'm resetting myself in the event of I am coming to do my um, removal of the catheter. So I'm going to put new gloves on. If I, again, we're going to be removing the full, oops, make sure that my rail is up. But again, I've been at my patient's bedside, but I know there is an additional rail in your rubric. Thank you. So I'm here at my bedside. Um, if I was going to be removing, I want to make sure that I drain any additional urine that is in the catheter into the back, and I would use a graduated cylinder to empty it, so that way um, there's none remaining in the bag. I'm going to make sure to record it appropriately and document. So again, this would be a way to dispose of that appropriately. I am going to apply my, well, at least since I was touching this stuff, my hand hygiene down, put on my gloves. Still here with my patient at the bedside. I am going to grab a syringe and I already have a waterproof pad under my client so I don't need to get another one. I need to have a syringe somewhere. But I have one missing so I'm going to use the syringe that I already have in my bag that is somewhere. Okay, we're going to pretend I have that syringe nice and ready. So they already have the waterproof pad. Again, I'm gonna be letting my patient know they're already exposed, obviously, but I would let them know that we will be exposing your perineal area for this removal. Again, since I wouldn't take it out immediately after I put it in, I'm always gonna be checking for any rashes, open sores, or redness. Um, I will be removing the leg strap for any pain in the leg. And the discard of that. So at this point, I can attach my syringe again to that balloon port. And I'm going to be removing all of the liquid, in this case liquid, because it could be liquid or air depending on what your kit uses. We are using sterile water. I'm going to remove all of it. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to secure this. I'm going to bring my hands underneath right here and I am going to ask my patient to exhale and then on that exhale I'm going to slowly remove that catheter controlling and maintaining the tip doing kind of that circular motion so I can maintain it. I'm going to wrap it into my um, drape over here and I'm going to be looking for any signs of infection, mucus, or blood and I don't see any so that's what I'm going to wrap this in the towel. I would remove this I'm going to discard this in the appropriate receptacle for whatever my institution uses. Obviously not on the bedside table, but we want to let you save your kits. Um, so again, at this point, I am going to offer to cleanse my patient's perineal area um, in case there was anything that was dirty. I'm going to be removing my gloves. Do hand hygiene. And I can assist my client into a comfortable position. I am going to bring their bed linen up. I can remove the bath blanket. I would put this into my dirty linen receptacle that I have right there. Should have had that. And I'm going to again assist them into a comfortable position with their gown. Make sure they can reach with their arms. And I then now I'm going to again make sure my patient is comfortable. I'm going to be lowering them down to the lowest position. I'm going to make sure that side rails are up. I'm going to make sure that the bed is locked. I'm going to make sure that they have their collar within reach. Once they get all the way down. Okay. Thank you so much. Again, if you need anything, please use your caller to call for me, okay? Thank you so much.
and hygiene on the way. Pass.